Okay, so this question says a uh, truck collides with a car. Okay, so there's some kind of a collision. I'm just gonna do the just to make sure I know there are two masses that are somehow interacting and a collision. Um, the net force on each vehicle is essentially the force exerted by the other. Oh, that makes things simpler. So I, let me just start drawing free body diagram now. So I'm going to draw free body diagram of one, uh, which would be my truck. Let me just label it. And car is going to be two. So this is going to be my object one. And uh, when I have free body diagram of two, that's my car. So normally I would have done um, a lot of thinking about what are the forces on these things and kind of spend time doing that. But the question is actually saying the net force on each vehicle is essentially the force exerted by the other. So I'm just going to proceed to ignore every other force like gravity, normal force, all those stuff that I normally would have worried about, thought about. But really all I have to worry about here is what is the force on M1 by M2? Well, as they collide, it looks like there should be a leftward force here. There should be a rightward force here. So that's what I'm going to draw. There should be a leftward force on 1 by 2. And there should be a rightward force on 2 by 1. And uh, if... Uh, these languages <laughs> are reminding you of one of the Newton's laws, then that's great. Um, these are Newton's third law uh, force pairs. And this uh, illustrates how you should use Newton's third law. When people try to use Newton's third law, sometimes people do this wrong thing where you get tricked by that equal and opposite wording of the simplified version and you start looking for equal and opposite forces. That's the totally wrong way to use Newton's third law. So the way you use Newton's third law is actually you identify the forces that are action-reaction force pairs because um, you can see that they are related to each other in the interaction. One is the force on one object by the second one, and it's flipped around for the other force. So once you identify them as action-reaction force pairs, then Newton's third law gives you license to say that these two forces are equal in magnitude. And hopefully you already drew them as opposite interactions. So. So that's how you use Newton's third law. And once you have that, then I think uh, the rest of the question will give me enough information to answer the question about what is the acceleration of car, which should be related to net force on the car. So this is the question I'm looking for. So let's, uh, um, or the unknown uh, variable that I'm looking for, let's see what information the question is giving. Uh, he says the mass of the car is okay. I will need that. Uh, once I <laughs> figure this out, then I do need the mass of the car to figure out acceleration of the car. Uh, the mass of the truck is 2,500 kilogram. Okay, probably good to have. And the magnitude of truck's acceleration is that. Okay, so it looks like what the question has done is it's given me enough information to figure this out because it's giving me mass and the acceleration of the truck which will give me the net force on the truck so i can say this is equal to m1 a1 and this is where newton's third law comes in now so uh, without newton's third law we would be just stuck here we can't say anything else we are still looking for this and nothing else relates to it Newton's third law tells us that these two forces are equal in magnitude, which means this force is equal to that. And it never stopped being equal to this. <laughs> so we can set these two equal to each other. So, so this is uh, my our equation. And uh, staring at it, we have one unknown here. So we should be able to solve for it. Let's just uh, solve for it. Acceleration of the car is uh, let me divide both sides by m2 so m1 a1 divided by m2 
And I think I should be able to plug in all the numbers and get a numerical answer. M1, uh, 2500 kilogram uh, times A1, 10 meters per second squared, uh, divided by M2, 540 kilograms. Uh, so 46.3 meter per second squared. And, and the question word, oh, uh, <laughs> and here it says find the magnitude of the car's acceleration. So they do want the positive quantity. The sign here doesn't matter to them. Okay. Good. And, you know, if, uh, if it wasn't clear, I would just start out with this. And if it says the answer is wrong, I'll try something else. <laughs> um, you have 100 tries, so use them. Um, yeah, so, so this is an example of uh, Newton's third law. It, it's a, uh, quite, it's one of the simplest examples of Newton's third law we can give. And uh, um, so this week, as you see standard strategy, you will see what I call Newton's third law check. It's uh, one of the things that I highly recommend that you do as you draw these free body diagrams that to make sure that you didn't forget about Newton's third law as you are drawing these free body diagrams. In this case, you really couldn't because these were the only forces. But when there are more forces, very often it's easy to forget. And um, that's what the check is for, that you will hear more about this week.